Oh, man. Let me tell you about my morning. Maybe then you'll understand why I'm sitting here with my hand on my forehead, trying to do an impression of Vladimir Nabokov in the uh, book jacket photo from his 1960s novels. Yeah, this is take two of my attempt to read John Ashbery's Soonest Mended. About 11 seconds into my first take, uh, Max the Black Cat walked across my desk, uh, placed his paw on the proper lever on my computer keyboard and turned off the camera. I did not notice this until several minutes later, when I had finished my reading of John Ashbery's Soonest Mended. So thanks, Max. Max the Black Cat sitting on my comforter now, looking kind of like a raisin on a marshmallow. There he is. You can see him there, the culprit, the interrupter of my reading of John Ashbery. I see you there, Max, sitting like a black sphinx. But enough of Max. Aleatoric appearances by black cats who just foul everything up. That's uh, par for the course in the oeuvre of John Ashbery. I'm going to be reading Soonest Mended, which is an Ashbery poem from the uh, 70s. It's uh, one of his medium-length poems. Uh, the thing about Ashbery is that he's a very, very difficult poet. Um, his short poems can be mind-breakingly difficult, and his long poems are very easy to get lost in. And uh, we'll probably get lost somewhere in Soonest Mended. But uh, I've often found that uh, traveling in cities and Ashbury's poems can be compared to cities. It's often the moments, the times when you get lost, wander into squares and neighborhoods you're not familiar with, that you sometimes make the most interesting discoveries. I remember once uh, in London, waiting to get into the Wallace collection one morning, I noticed in the distance uh, the top of, an, of a church. So I walked a couple blocks, uh, went, in went inside this church, and found it was, it was this wonderful uh, Victorian Gothic Revival Catholic church from uh, the, uh, I believe it was the late 19th century. It was just a really, really pretty church that I wouldn't have discovered if I hadn't decided to get a little lost in London. So turning to John Ashbery, first volume of the Library of America Ashbery. It's now, uh, now up to two volumes and I assume eventually they'll be publishing a third because he wrote a lot in his old age. So here we go. Take two, thanks to Max the Black Cat, of my reading of John Ashbery's Soonest Mended. Soonest Mended. Barely tolerated, living on the margin in our technological society, we were always having to be rescued on the brink of destruction like heroines in Orlando Furioso, before it was time to start all over again. There would be thunder in the bushes, a rustling of coils, and Angelica in the Ang painting was considering the colorful but small monster near her toe, as though wondering whether forgetting the whole thing might not, in the end, be the only solution. And then there always came a time when Happy Hooligan in his rusted green automobile came plowing down the course just to make sure everything was okay. Only by that time we were in another chapter and confused about how to receive this latest piece of information. Was it information? Weren't we rather accepting this out for someone? Weren't we rather acting this out for someone else's benefit? Thoughts in a mind with room enough and to spare for our little problems, so they began to seem, our daily quandary about food and the rent and bills to be paid. To reduce all this to a small variant, to step free at last, 
minuscule on the gigantic plateau. This was our ambition, to be small and clear and free. Alas, the summer's energy wanes quickly, a moment and it is gone. And no longer may we make the necessary arrangements, simple as they are. Our star was brighter, perhaps, when it had water in it. Now there is no question even of that, but only of holding on to the hard earth so as not to get thrown off with an occasional dream, a vision. A robin flies across the upper corner of the window. You brush your hair away and cannot quite see. Or a wound will flash against the sweet faces of the others, something like, this is what you wanted to hear, so why did you think of listening to something else? We are all talkers, it is true, but underneath the talk lies the moving and not wanting to be moved, the loose meaning, untidy and simple, like a threshing floor. These, then, were some hazards of the course. Yet though we knew the course was hazards and nothing else, it was still a shock when, almost a quarter of a century later, the clarity of the rules dawned on you for the first time. They were the players, and we who had struggled at the game were merely spectators, though subject to its vicissitudes, and moving with it out of the tearful stadium, borne on shoulders at last. Night after night this message returns, repeated in the flickering bulbs of the sky, raised past us, taken away from us, yet hours over and over, until the end that is past truth, the being of our sentences in the climate that fostered them, not ours to own like a book, but to be with, and sometimes to be without, alone and desperate. But the fantasy makes it ours, a kind of fence-sitting raised to the level of an aesthetic ideal. These were moments, years, solid with reality, faces, nameable events, kisses, heroic acts, but like the friendly beginning of a geometrical progression, not too reassuring, as though meaning could be cast aside some day when it had been outgrown. Better, you said, to stay cowering like this in the early lessons, since the promise of learning is a delusion. And I agreed, adding that tomorrow would alter the sense of what had already been learned, that the learning process is extended in this way, so that from this standpoint, none of us ever graduates from college. For time is an emulsion, and probably thinking not to grow up is the brightest kind of maturity for us, right now at any rate. And you see, both of us were right, though nothing has somehow come to nothing. The avatars of our conforming to the rules and living around the home have made, well, in a sense, good citizens of us, brushing the teeth and all that, and learning to accept the charity of the hard moments as they are doled out, for this is action, this not being sure, this careless preparing, sowing the seeds crooked in the furrow, making ready to forget, and always coming back to the mooring of starting out that day so long ago. John Ashbery, a poem titled Soonest Mending. See ya.